welcome back. So in this episode of the 1730s robe decor series at this point, um, we are working on the shift that will go under the dress. Shifts in this time period were pretty standard. Every woman wore them underneath her stays and most were large and voluminous, consisting of a full width of fabric and then the sleeves on top of it would be about a half width. So what I wanted to do at that point was create a similar style based on an original. Now I looked through multiple, multiple inspirations for this particular shirt style, but wasn't really finding anything that I was in love with or felt you know, suited the overall costume I was trying to create. And then I came across the stir shirt. The stir shirt was a shirt worn by Svante Stenson and Nils Svansson. Both of them were brothers. They had plotted against the King of Sweden and as punishment, they were both put to death. Now the family in their grief of the crimes actually took this shirt that they were wearing and preserved it. So we were left with an example of a Swedish nobleman's shirt. I really actually enjoyed the details here. Though it's not 1730s, I would say it's pretty common construction and details that would have been available at the time. Also, I was trying to sort of play with this concept of doing the 1680s and the 1730s together as part of the character. So I thought it would be appropriate to sort of mix this older style of shirt with a chemise that my character would be wearing. I really like the gathering and the way the cuffs are done. I decided that I wanted to add lace to it. I wanted to make it a little bit more feminine. So I played around with the particular style and sleeves and now you can kind of see where I'm getting these inspirations from. And if you want to take a look at my overall drawing, I'm going to freeze frame it right now. After I went through the initial planning stages of the project and planning out the sizes of the blocks that I would be using to construct the shift, I went ahead and pulled threads for all of the pieces so that way they would be perfectly on grain. This is really important for shift making because you want it to hang nicely and with fabrics such as linen, it's very difficult to cut these things and cut them on grain. So pulling that thread is really important and helps a lot. It takes a lot of time but it'll save you a lot of time in the end. Now as for the fabric, I decided to use silk organza. It is not period accurate, not to my knowledge and not to any evidence that I can find. There was definitely a type of linen that was available at the time that was a much finer linen than we can get our hands on today, even at very expensive prices. And it had the appearance of something like this gazar. So I decided to go with the gazar and it created a really nice flow that I really enjoyed and it was very um sensual and beautiful and i knew it would look really good in photos so i decided to go not period with it and go with this particular silk Once I have all my pieces cut out, I then start constructing the arm first. We take the gore or the gusset underneath the arm, it's that square piece that you'll see in a lot of shifts, and we attach it to the base of the armhole and then we sew it using a running back stitch. Some people use a back stitch, but I find with the felled seam, a running back stitch is more than sufficient to hold the seam together and keep it pretty durable. So we do a running back stitch down the length of the gusset to the point 
where the stitch line stops. This is really important not to go past that line because you're going to need that as a pivot point and you're gonna need that little point at the end of the gusset to be free. Once I've come to the end of the stitch line on my next side, I then take the needle and pass it through the stitch line into the other piece of fabric. I then move that point out of the way and begin stitching the rest of the sleeve from that point on. Sometimes I'll do a little back stitch here just to make sure that it's extra secure. So you could do the same thing. And then I continue with the running back stitches all the way down the rest of the arm. Once I do that, it's now time to fell the seam over. What I have found is it's easier to fell the seam in the same direction as the seam next to it. So both seams are going either to the left or to the right. So you're going to end up felling the same seam on the side that you are felling. So in this case, I am felling to the left. I'm going to start with the left seam, working on the gusset portion only from the top of the gusset down to the bottom of the gusset and then clip. And then I will start felling on the right side and fold over top of that clip with the longer seam on the opposite side. Once I've sewn the seam of the sleeves, I then move on to the main body. My first step is to sew the side gores to the main panel of the body. I do this by taking the bias seam of the side gore and attaching that to the straight seam of the side body. What that does is keep the bias seam of the side gore from stretching out. If you attach both gores on the bias seam, it'll stretch out down the side of the body and you don't want that to happen. Once I've attached the gores to the main body, I then have a side seam I can work with and I then take the arm and stitch down the armhole and then continue down into the side seam. Using the same method of construction that I used on the sleeve side of the gusset, I then do the same thing on the side seam side of the gusset. So this is where we're at. We've gotten the sleeve put in. The sleeve is now in the body and the body is sewn together. I just have to felt this seam, but I wanted to show you something. Um, what you can see is that I had to move the sleeve up and shorten it to be able to make the arm's eye a little bit smaller. Um, it was way too big before and it would have been way too low and very uncomfortable. 
Um, so we just did a quick little fix, slid it over, and now we're going to cut it where you see I pulled the thread so that it's on a nice straight line. And we're gonna chop it off right at the top, gather it into a neckline, and it should be much more comfortable and a little bit more flattering. We're gonna see that in the fitting that I have later today and hopefully everything works. So hopefully, we'll see. After I fixed my little mistake, I then gathered up the neckline and one sleeve. This is just a quick gathering stitch. It'll come out later, it's just so that my model could wear it and I could try it on her. After the fitting, I then took out my gathering stitch and proceeded to finish off all of the edges of the chemise. So this would be the neckline, the hem, and both sleeves. I did this by doing a really small, really simple rolled hem. There's a few different tutorials for this. I'll post one down in the comments just so you have a reference for it. But it's essentially a zigzag stitch that you then pull and the seam sort of rolls together. Once I completed hemming all of the necessary parts, I then attached all of the lace to the edges that I wanted lace. So this is the cuff and also the neckline. To start sewing the lace on, I cut off a small bit of the lace just so that I have a first repeat. So that way when I get to the other side, I can then match that lace up and then it will be nearly invisible. I did this by simply doing a, a running stitch with a single back stitch every few stitches. I wanted it to be easy to come off in case I ever wanted to remove it. In this case, I am foreshadowing, or I wanted to remove it at a later date um, for washing, etc. This is pretty common practice in this time. Most laces were attached either separately or with light tacking stitches to the garment because it would need to be removed to be used on multiple garments, especially something like a shift or a chemise. Once I complete putting the lace onto all the edges that require lace, I then mark my chemise at the point where I want to gather it up. Now if you notice in the original image, the cuff is actually a very narrow band of straight cut fabric that is applied to the gathers, treating it almost like a cartridge pleat but not quite, and it's only on one side so that these cuffs are not separate to the actual garment but the excess that would normally be gathered up and turned in is left out and decorated. To gather up the sleeves, I then just do a very small running stitch all the way around twice. I am taking great care to make sure that the stitches are even because what I want this to do is eventually look like very small cartridge pleats. Once I do the second row of gathering, I will do my best to match the stitch length that I've just done on the previous row. That way they'll gather up into nice neat little pleats. I can then stitch the small band to those pleats and create a nice neat little finish. I then did the same thing at the neckline and you get a smaller, more delicate version of what I did on the cuff. Thank you. 
After the sleeves and the neckline have been gathered, I then apply the quote unquote cuff and quote unquote neck tape to the main body by using a simple back stitch. And it's done and it's beautiful and I love it. And then I decided I hated it. And what I did is didn't film it in a very spontaneous fit of rage while I was getting the dress together. I decided that I didn't like the cuffs and I didn't like the collar. I felt it was too fussy for the look I was going for. So I cut them off, regathered the sleeves and regathered the neckline. And then I simply bound it with the same trim that I used as the quote unquote cuffs made it really simple and elegant and I actually really like this a lot more. Um, what you'll notice is in some pictures she has lace and some pictures she doesn't and that was simply done by creating a false lace cuff that was then basted to the cuff of the shift. I only did this for the photo shoot. I'll be able to take it on and off for multiple different looks and also it made cleaning the garment much easier. Thank you for joining me you guys i hope you enjoyed this one this one was a bit of a quick one um i do plan on doing a more historically accurate shift in the future so stay tuned for more videos please like and subscribe so you get those notifications and you know when i post my next video and you can follow along with this process until the end of the project there's a few more pieces to come so i'm really excited to show it to you guys mm -hmm.